Hi, welcome to the Spoon Fork Heart Kitchen. My name is Joe. Some of you might know me as the camera guy. Uh, I'm really lucky today. Siri's gonna let me inside her kitchen and I'm gonna make a recipe for you. I've done it for her a couple times and she asked me if I'd bring it to you, uh, her subscribers, and I'd be more than happy to. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make your own homemade bacon. This is a really simple recipe and the bacon tastes great. There's just a few simple ingredients. You've probably got most of them already, uh, but let's check them out. The first ingredient is brown sugar. We're gonna use a quarter cup. The next ingredient is a half a cup of pure maple syrup. Of course, this bad boy, I've got three pounds of pork belly and the pork belly is already, um, the rough skin on the fat side is already taken off for us. And then we've got a quarter cup of sea salt. We've got a teaspoon of coarse black pepper and we've got a quarter teaspoon of curing salt. And before we get started, I just want to mention a word about the curing salt. This is number one pink curing salt. Uh, the purpose of this salt, it will stop bacteria growth in its tracks and no bacteria is gonna grow while we are curing our pork belly here. Uh, but it's also a hazard if you use too much. It could, it could really get you sick and could possibly kill you if you ingest too much. So the important thing is to follow the instructions. Don't put too much of the pink uh, curing salt into your recipe. Okay, the first part of this recipe is really easy. We're just gonna take those ingredients and mix them together. Uh, we're gonna start with our quarter cup of sea salt. Put that in a bowl. We're gonna put our quarter cup, or I'm sorry, half cup of brown sugar. Put that in there. Our tablespoon of black pepper and our quarter teaspoon of pink curing salt. Remember, this is not pink salt. This is curing salt. It's pink uh, as well, but don't confuse it with regular pink salt. I'm just gonna grab a fork and mix this well together. So everything's kind of just mixed in. Okay, and I think I told you that the brown sugar was a half a cup. It's actually, it was a quarter cup. Uh, no! yeah! I'm great that I've got a, uh, I'm lucky that I've got a great, <laughs> I've got a great baby too. I'm lucky that I've got a great camera lady that just called me out on that. So again, brown sugar was a quarter cup, not a half cup. And the, uh, the maple syrup is a half a cup. So we've got everything mixed into our, um, into our little bowl here. Okay, so the next step is to just place this all inside of our Ziploc bag. Let's start with the pork belly. Uh, I've trimmed this pork belly up a little bit, but I got it at Costco and it was pretty much uh, mostly trimmed for me already. So we're just gonna kind of get that into the bag. We're gonna place our ingredients in there as well. And this time we're gonna include the maple syrup. Now we're gonna just seal this bag up and give everything a really, really good mix. Okay, now while we're sealing this bag up, we're gonna to wanna to kinda of squeeze as much of that air out as we can. You don't have to get it all out. You don't need to use a vacuum sealer at this stage. We're just trying to get as much oxygen out as we can because oxygen is not your friend when you're curing. Oxygen can bring bacteria. Um, so we squeeze as much out as we can and we're just gonna give this as much of a massage as possible. Okay, I've got it all mixed in our Ziploc bag here. And you know, I, I do feel a little bit of an air bubble as I'm mixing, so I'm just gonna open the corner a little bit and just try to get some more of that air out before I do a final seal. All right, I think that's better. Okay, and the last part for this step is to just put your pork belly on a flat surface. I like to use a, uh, a cookie sheet. Just put it on there and stick it in the fridge. 
Doesn't need to be in the freezer, doesn't need to be any special temperature, just in the refrigerator. And what you're gonna wanna make sure that you do every single day, and don't forget, this is really important. Every single day, you just take your pork belly and flip it. Next day, come back and flip it again. Now you're gonna do that for five to seven days. Uh, just depends on a lot of different factors, but uh, you're gonna know your, all the moisture should be seeping out of this pork belly. As you're flipping, you're gonna know it'll, it'll be firm, uh, it'll have a lot less moisture. You're gonna know when it's right. It's gonna be a minimum of five days and I wouldn't go longer than seven. Um, so I'm gonna go put this in the refrigerator right now. I'm gonna flip it every day and we'll see you in probably five, maybe six or seven days to uh, finish this recipe. Okay, and thanks to the magic of the internet, it has been five days and our bacon is done. Um, I put them in the fridge for five days and I turned them every single day. And this is what we've got. You can see a lot of that moisture in these bags that the salt pulled out. Okay, and so the next step is to rinse these pork bellies off. We're gonna remove them from the uh, Ziploc bag, stick them in the sink here. And you could see all of the uh, moisture that came out of that pork belly. The salt over the course of five days really draws that moisture out. And now we're just going to um, just give them a very, very, very good uh, rinse. We want to make sure we're getting as much of that salt off of here as we possibly can. And everything else is going to come off too. Some of your black pepper is going to come off, but that's okay. But you really want to spend some time and rinse this very, very well. Okay, these pork bellies have been uh, cured. They've been thoroughly rinsed and I'm just going to pat them dry. I've got them on a, uh, a drip pan here, a <laughs> just to kind of just kind of help let the uh, the water drip out from the rinse and I'm just gonna pat them dry on both sides okay the pork belly has been cured it's been thoroughly rinsed off and we pad it dry with some paper towels I've got it on this rack at this point, you're going to want to put it back in the refrigerator for 24 hours. This is going to help to uh, really ensure that that pork belly dries out uh, from the rinse we just gave it and from taking it out of the bags. A lot of people skip this step and go straight to smoking. I don't recommend you do that. I highly recommend that you place it on a rack and put it back in the refrigerator for 24 hours and then smoke it. Uh, you, re you really do want this to be dried out as much as possible before smoking. So uh, we'll see you in 24 hours. Okay, it's been 24 hours and we let our bacon sit in the fridge uh, just like this to kind of dry it out. And you can see it is very firm, very dry. There's still some black pepper on there. And what we have to do now is smoke it. And I've got the uh, internal thermometer here. We want to make sure that we don't cook these. We're just looking to smoke it, not cook it. So we're not going to go over 150 degrees internal temperature. We're going to smoke for two hours. Okay, we're out on the back patio. I've got the pork belly out here. I've got a, uh, a tin full of, <laughs> of applewood uh, chips. We're going to smoke with applewood today on the master built smoker. Let me throw these chips in here first. And put these pork bellies right in here. Well, let's put one on the top rack. And we're putting them fat side down. Okay, we'll smoke these for two hours and that will be the final step. Then we'll just cook them and eat them. <laughs> 
okay, we've been smoking for two hours. We've got an internal temperature of about 150, 155 degrees, and this is ready to come out. Okay, that's it. Now we've turned uh, pork belly into bacon and this is what we ended up with. We ended up with two three pound slabs of bacon. Um, out of the smoker now, they're still a little bit warm, but I don't wanna wait any longer. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting some slices and put them in the, uh, in the pan so we can taste test it. One of the great things about making bacon at home is you can cut it as thin or as thick as you like. I'm a, I'm a guy who likes thick cut bacon, so when I cut it myself, I tend to kind of cut some thicker slabs. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and throw a few pieces into our uh, cast iron skillet here. And you can see I've got some nice thick slices. One thing I gotta tell you about um, making your own homemade bacon is the, the bacon tends to cook and burn a little bit easier than store-bought bacon. So you're definitely gonna wanna cook it on a low heat and keep a really close eye on it uh, to keep it from burning. Okay, so our bacon is done that we cut up and put in the um, in the uh, cast iron skillet. This is, uh, again, I was telling you, you see it burns a little bit because there is a high sugar content with the syrup and the brown sugar. So it does kind of tend to burn quickly when you have homemade bacon. Uh, the best thing you can do is just cook it low and slow and be patient. And I know everybody likes their bacon a little bit different, but uh, this is how I like mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a bite right now and see how it tastes. Wow. Wow. That's really good. It's not too salty like sometimes you get at the store, it's too salty. You can definitely taste the brown sugar, the maple, the black pepper, the applewood smoke on there. If you've never made your own bacon at home, you gotta try it. So if you like this video, you know what to do, right? You hear it from Siri all the time. Give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends, uh, and definitely make some and give it to your friends and family. As a matter of fact, if you look right here, uh, we've got six pounds total, so I'm not gonna eat all this. I'm going to trim them up, uh, put them in the zip sealer, and give them away to friends and family, uh, probably in two pound pieces. So anyway, thank you to Siri for letting me uh, cook something inside of her kitchen. And thank you to all the subscribers. Uh, tune in and we'll see you for the next videos. Bye.